Hey people, it's me again. So, anyways, as far as what's going on in the world of YouTube lately, it's like everybody that I've been subscribed to has been kind of clamoring over the latest changes with YouTube as far as that goes, with the new changes to the flagging system that now you can flag videos that are just offensive to you. Even if they don't really violate the terms of service as far as that goes. So, the problem with that is, that sort of thing can be, can be set up for abuse in a way as far as that goes. Especially when it comes to people that have subscribed to who are anti-SJWs in such cases. That any of these, like, these uh, thin-skinned SJWs could go on a rampage and flag videos left and right, you know, without any kind of recourse for the people who have been targeted for such things. You know, but... As one of the things that the people that said on there, you know, was Hayes that said about, uh, Vector 21, or I forgot his name at the time, you know, where he had been subjected to such things like that, you know, and then what had happened, he resorted to flagging the people's who flag their videos there just to see how they like it. And in a way that also happened to me at that point where somebody had flagged my video and then caused my channel to go down and I actually flagged their video and then their channel went down as far as that goes to tell the truth. So, um, in any case, you know, as far as that goes, I mean, it is kind of disturbing of, of all the implications in such cases there. And then the latest thing was that you, that you could also flag certain videos as far as promoting terrorism and all that. And especially when it was uh, the ADL in some cases. But I don't know whether or not if the ADL has gotten corrupted lately as far as that goes. You know, but I wouldn't bet on that sort of stuff. But it was mainly due to the fact that they were trying to pacify the whole advertisers ever since since the new the whole mainstream news media had gone around and claimed that that ISIS was being heavily promoted on YouTube and all that even though it was false or unsubstantiated in some ways yeah but still they managed they managed to scare enough advertisers to cause such a, such things like that to happen with YouTube, to tell the truth. So, anyways, as far as all of that, you know, then there was the whole creator ambassadors or whatever that sort of thing that was called now, and then what's her name? Francesca Ramsey was part of that sort of thing, you know how, and then look at how it is with her, you know, it's like everything that she says is basically bought and paid for by Viacom and all that, you know, and now she claims that everything is racist, everything is sexist, or something like that, and the thing is, is that people like her want certain, want the people of color to be in this constant state of fear, this constant state of being oppressed by the hetero white cis male Sort of thing, which is complete utter bullshit. I mean, nowadays it's just basically you have all these protections here in the first place, and then, in, and then, in some point or another, you know, it'll also apply to the hetero white cis male as soon as they become the minority. You know, eventually that's basically what's going to happen in about another ten or twenty years from now. The hetero white cis male could also be a protected class in some shape or form and then basically people like Francesca Ramsey could be sued for discrimination for that matter anyways because of the fact that how they're claiming all these hetero white cis male are all racist and misogynist and homophobic and xenophobic or whatever it is when it's completely not true you know but in some ways, I just find all this kind of bizarre 
how we gotten that far to the left at this point. Or is it just simply because I'm just getting a little bit conservative because I'm getting older? You know, the fact that I'm now 36, I might, I might have gotten a bit somewhat conservative in some ways than compared to what I was 10 years ago, I think. But maybe, maybe not. It depends on how, how everything is going to be at that point. But in some ways, as far as the state of things with the Democratic Party, it's like they still have that, the neoliberals still have that unholy alliance with, with the social justice warriors. And, you know, I don't even know how long that's going to pretty much last at this point. I mean, until maybe, like, the social justice warriors basically grow out of that whole overtly entitled phase of, you know, that's all true. And then, and especially at some point or another when, when these, uh, people who are kind of about 10, maybe 15 years younger than me realize that the neoliberal part of the Democratic Party, there are all these corporate Democrats, don't really give a shit about them. And that simply, they, that they're just that tool to kind of weed out the, pe weed out the progressive people in the party. Weed out all of the people who supported Bernie, or Tulsi Gabbard, or Nina Turner, or um, uh, what's his name, Keith Ellison, and this other guy I forgot his name, and but he's who was also a progressive. You know that was a little bit more progressive than Keith Ellison that was running for the D and the DNC chair. So. I think that's just really the case here, you know, but it depends on how things are going to be in, in, in the state of YouTube there, but believe me, YouTube used to be kind of underground and all this kind of thing there, and now it's become kind of mainstream at this sort of thing. It's just like MTV, how MTV became that underground sensation and all that and now it's kind of considered mainstream and it's basically how it was like with the prior parades it's that it used to be kind of underground and all this but now it's kind of mainstream or even in some cases like the bear community is also used to be underground but now it's mainstream and it's just like all those artists that I liked at some point where they were where they were kind of ex obscure in some ways, you know, and then now they become mainstream in some ways, and, you know, like, Our Lady Peace at that point. When, back in 99, it was like, nobody really know what I was talking about as far as Our Lady Peace, unless they were Canadian and all that, you know. But now it's like when I mentioned about Our Lady Peace, people will think, oh, yeah, that song's somewhere out there, or, uh, or, um, innocent. You know, that's just basically how it is, but, but on the other hand, I feel like, you know, with such acts like that, it, it's kind of inevitable for such things to become mainstream and become basically a corporate salad at some point or another, and so I really shouldn't really be that upset about this sort of thing happening to like some of my favorite bands or certain things that that I was a part of that was that was once considered underground in some ways. I mean, look at how it was ten or twenty years ago as far as with veganism in a way. I mean, I hate having to go and talk about this sort of thing. And then twenty years ago, it's like not a whole lot of people were kind of vegan and all that. And nowadays, it's basically mainstream in some ways. And then there are some people that latch on to some other kind of obscure kind of diet in some ways just to just to become the ultimate hipster in some ways because hating on mainstream, that sort of stuff. But now it's like hating on mainstream is actually mainstream. 
that sort of thing, you know. But anyway, I feel like I'm at that age where I really don't have to care about what is mainstream and what isn't mainstream, you know. So, anyways, talk to you guys later.